Hello, and welcome to the Kubernetes Working Group for Multi-Tenancy. Today, we're going to be doing a project overview in which we will cover how you can get involved with our working group, which is part of the upstream Kubernetes uh, community. And we will also be going over some of the three main projects that the working group has been working on, uh, information about how you can use them, how you can get involved in contributing to them. Um, just to quickly kick off, um, for the working group, the chairs are me, I'm Tasha Drew. Uh, I am the director of product incubation at VMware. I also work on project, I used to work on Project Pacific. I was responsible for launching the Tanzu Kubernetes grid service for vSphere. My co-chair is Sanjeev Rampal. He's a principal engineer at Cisco. And then we have the project leads uh, on, this, um, on this presentation today. We have Adrian Ludwin from Google, who works on the hierarchical namespace controller. We have Faye Guo um, from the virtual clusters uh, and tenant controller project. He's at Alibaba. And then we have Jin Bagwadia, who works on the multi-tenancy benchmarks, and he is the founder and CEO at Nermada. Um, and each of those uh, project leads will be giving a more detailed introduction uh, of both themselves and the projects uh, later in this presentation. So you may be wondering how you can get involved in the multi-tenancy working group. Um, so for uh, new contributors or people who are interested in getting started with open source, uh, what I would no my number one recommendation is join our Google group. So that's the second link uh, on this slide. You can go to groups.google.com and just search for us for working group multi-tenancy, Kubernetes. Uh, when you join the Google group, um, that will give you access to our documents, uh, our meeting agendas. You'll see links to go and watch our meetings that we We've posted to YouTube. We'll post a link to this uh, presentation um, in that same YouTube channel as well. Um, but you will also uh, get a, a calendar invitation to all of our meetings. And so uh, a lot of times people get really confused about how to join our meetings. We have biweekly meetings where we go over project status. You can come and present anything you're working on um, by adding it to the agenda or suggesting on the, on the mailing list that you'd like to talk about something. Uh, but that calendar invitation to that meeting and the Zoom link will all come to you if you just join our Google group. So if you're not going to do anything else, but you want to join that, uh, definitely join the Google group. It may take a few days for that calendar invitation to show up. Uh, there's some latency in the system. Adrian's working on it. Uh, Google will solve it any day now. Uh, but yeah, just be patient. Uh, I promise if you join the Google group, you'll get that invitation. We're also in the Kubernetes Slack in our multi-tenancy uh, channel. You can join that by going to slack.k8s.io. Um, and yeah, we also have a GitHub repo where all of this code is available. You see that link at the bottom of this slide. Uh, so just Kubernetes-sigs slash multi-tenancy. Um, so yep, that's that's how you can find us. That's how you can talk to, with us more. Um, we are part of the open source community. Super happy to have more people involved, more interest, um, and uh, new ideas and new projects as well. So uh, yeah, join us. And now over to uh, Adrian to do a deep dive into HNC. Thanks, Tasha. Uh, so I'm Adrian. I work at Google Waterloo up here in sunny and warm Canada. Come visit next year. Uh, and I'll be talking a little bit about the hierarchical namespace controller, which is our project to add a concept of hierarchy to the Kubernetes namespaces that you know and love. Uh, so why would you want to do this? Well, the reason is that uh, namespaces are the foundations for all policies in Kubernetes. So RBAC, network policies, quota, limit ranges, uh, and also uh, most of the CRDs that you create will have namespace scope as well, unless they're, uh, unless they're a cluster-wide operator. So everything really centers around namespaces. And yeah, sometimes you can subdivide things at a, at a sub namespace, uh, like within a namespace, I should say. Uh, but by and large, most of these um, features either work the best or only work at the namespace level. And you can see my talk from QCon EU from earlier this summer that goes into this in more detail. So namespaces are great, but sometimes you want policies across namespaces, such as to represent a tenant who has access to multiple namespaces uh, in your cluster. So adding hierarchy to namespaces is a great way to uh, enforce this idea of ownership and express tenancy, and also allows you to create self-service, what we call sub-namespaces, which uh, give you permission to create a namespace even if you don't have cluster-level privileges, all while adding as little as possible to core Kubernetes. So HNC, it's a great solution if lots of teams want to share a single cluster. Uh, and if you combine it with a GitOps solution to, uh, to spread uh, policies across multiple clusters, that's when it works well in a multi-cluster environment as well. 
So how does this work? Well, what it does is it creates a little uh, agency, gives you this little custom resource that you can use to take existing namespaces and arrange them into parent-child relationships. Uh, and we call these full namespaces because you can uh, you can modify the hierarchy. Or as I mentioned, you can create these self-service, what we call sub-namespaces, uh, where if you just have permission to create a sub-namespace underneath this particular existing namespace, and then that one's locked in place. You can't move it around. And so that's really good for those sort of self-serve uh, contexts. And then once you have that, you can create policies in the ancestor namespaces, and they will just get copied into the descendants. You can pick which ones uh, get copied in uh, a cluster-wide config. Uh, things like RBAC, limit ranges, network policies. Uh, an agency also puts some guaranteed labels onto the namespaces that mirrors the hierarchy. And you can use those as label selectors and things like network policies to get that kind of hierarchical enforcement. Uh, as I mentioned, I gave a talk that went into HNC in depth at KubeCon EU. Uh, it's on YouTube. It's fantastic, if I may say so myself, so please go look at it. Um, but we are not sitting still, and we've been working pretty hard ever since then. So the big changes since that uh, talk have been, well, the uh, HNC has been increasing in stability as we get more users, more people evaluating it, trying to break it and poke it in weird ways, which is great. Uh, we're finding some corner cases and, and getting rid of some of the botches that made it harder to use. Uh, we are adding exceptions and selectors. What this means is that, remember how I just said you put a, um, an object in an ancestor namespace, it gets copied to all of the descendants? Well, sometimes you don't want it to go to all the descendants because strict hierarchies are too restrictive. So uh, with exceptions, you can basically put a label selector on objects, and that will stop it from being propagated everywhere in the hierarchy, uh, or even to nowhere at all if you don't want to, if for some reason. Uh, the last thing that we're adding is an improved API. So we did an API review after the, um, the API had grown in a sort of ad hoc way for about a year. Um, it survived pretty well, but there were a couple of, uh, of nice changes that we made, uh, things to make it more Kubernetes compliant. Um, and so we're introducing this in the next version, which is 0 0.6. Not going to be, we don't think there will be many changes before we go to a beta. And if you already have HNC installed, we're going to upgrade all of your objects for you automatically. Uh, so if you want to get this, uh, you do not need to get a new version of Kubernetes. It's just an add-on, so it's pretty easy. You can add it to any uh, Kubernetes 15 cluster. I think at some point soon we'll be switching that to 1.16. Uh, for if you want it on open source, you can go to that uh, multi-tenancy repo that uh, Tasha mentioned and just click through to HNC uh, or go to the releases page and, and grab it from our releases. Uh, if you happen to be using GKE or Anthos, then uh, then you can get it uh, as a product called Hierarchy Controller in Config Sync or Anthos Config Management. Um, and it comes with a really nice plugin uh, that you can install using Crew, which is cool, and it's available for Linux and Mac OS. If you want to learn more about this, as I mentioned, I have uh, the video from KubeCon EU. Uh, just after that, I wrote a blog post on Kubernetes.io. Uh, so please go check that out and uh, read through and learn more about the, the thinking behind HNC and the concepts around it. Um, and if you would like to contribute, we are looking for contributors who want to work on features that we like the idea of, but we haven't quite been able to get to yet. Things like uh, setting us per subtree configuration, if you only want secrets to be uh, propagated in one subtree but not another. Uh, creating sub spaces with default policies that are not inherited. Hierarchical resource code, lots of people talk about that one. And just generally improving productionization support. I was actually working on Prometheus today, um, but more eyes are always welcome. Plus, more to help with testing, uh, more help with documentation, any patches uh, that you want to provide. Uh, we are always looking for people who want to help out with that kind of stuff. And so uh, please stick around, and I hope to hear your questions afterwards. Uh, and with that, I will pass it over to Faye to talk about virtual clusters. Just quick check. Can you guys see the screen? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Fei. Uh, I come from Alibaba. Uh, in the past one and a half year, I was working uh, closely with the uh, multi tenancy working group on a project called Virtual Cluster. Um, uh, as Andrew mentioned in previous presentation, um, the in Kubernetes namespace is the primary uh, API abstraction to support multi-tenancy. Um, but by sharing uh, 
Uh, for, for, for many tenants users to share one API server itself brings some problem that cannot easily uh, handled by namespace. For example, uh, they may have performance interference between uh, among each other. And uh, uh, once when you when, when we really use namespace to organize all the tenant of, uh, resources and only give tenant users to access to the namespace, it is hard for them to create a cluster of resources such as um, CRD or Webhook Center, uh, which give some uh, trouble for management for for the for their management stack. Um, uh, I see. Uh, we do see some cases that uh, uh, the namespace-based uh, isolation is good enough, but we do see some other cases, people may want very strict or complete isolation, and they won't have a solution which is compatible with the existing Kubernetes API. So, so, the, the, so compared, uh, people may do this by just create individual you know, cluster per tenant, but in that solution, there is a problem that um, uh, if each people has individual no, uh, cluster by managing their uh, individual nodes, it is harder to do the global optimization for the node, uh, node utilization. So ideally we'd like to have a kind of complete control plan isolation uh, solution where we can share in the node resource among all the tenants. Um, as I said before, we wish the solution um, has almost zero integration efforts for the existing system, which means uh, we, we'd like to have a solution that uh, it, which, which is fully compatible with the existing Kubernetes APIs. Um, in this project, though, we introduce a new uh, kind of architect for the virtual cluster. Uh, in short, the idea is that we will, the, we will have a tenant operator which will assign um, a dedicated uh, control plan for each individual tenant. And uh, the, the tenant, uh, we, which we call the tenant master, the tenant master, the goal of the tenant master is to do to maintain all the objects that are created by the tenant users, and there, there is a sync controller which synchronizes all the you know tenant created objects from the tenant master to a super master, uh, which is the Kubernetes cluster which manages the actual node resource. Um, so in order for the you know different tenant to call the Kubernetes, Kubernetes API. Uh, to access or monitor the pod or do the uh, logging or EXCC uh, API call to the, to the tenant pods, we introduce a component called VN agent, which proxy all the you know, tenant requests to the uh, Kubernetes APIs. Uh, from a high level perspective, if you look at this architecture, ideally um, the tenant master is the object state maintainer and the super master is can be as abstracted as a resource provider only. It only provided a part of resource to each tenant um, users. With this solution, um, it is clear that in, with this solution, uh, each tenant user has you know, complete view isolation. It won't be aware of all the objects that are created by other tenants since they don't have direct access to the super master at all. Uh, with this solution, we also limited the blast radius if any tenants hit any you know, security uh, vulnerability, only that tenant is get affected and the other tenant won't, won't be get affected. Uh, also with this approach, since you know, each tenant uh, user ha has a dedicated control plan, it will, it will have access to the, all the uh, resources that are presented in the tenant master, including all the uh, CRD, scope resource, RBAC control, et cetera. Um, since you know, Supermaster Owning, you know, treat uh, owning works as a part of resource provider. It doesn't uh, involves in the you know uh, control plan management step. Um, so this is uh, what we do in the virtual cluster. Uh, uh, the the uh, what, what what the virtual cluster really does uh, from the high level architecture perspective. Um, next, I'm give a brief uh, status about how this project goes. Um, uh, at this moment, the, the, in the, the, uh, among all the three major components, uh, tenant operator, sync operator, and a VN agent, the sync controller and the VN agent are, uh, are pretty mature at, uh, as of now. They are uh, kind of production ready. Uh, we are actually working on switching the tenant operator to a new class, the API-based design and implementation. The idea is that we, uh, we are trying to have a more, provide a more formal way to do the tenant, um, uh, tenant master provisioning management 
by leveraging the all existing cluster API offering that uh, cluster API C groups has been uh, has been done in the past one and a half years. They have a very good tooling um, around it, and uh, they have the, uh, We want to follow their you know specification about how to define a tenant uh, master component. Um, this project uh, uh, was starting as a working multi tenant working group incubator project. And now we, we already get a C, uh, C class API uh, the support and we are moving, uh, we, are, we are working on moving the entire code to a new repo called class API provider nested. So the, all the future development and the enhancement will be done in that repo. And, uh, and this is a open source uh, project and uh, this is a committee effort. Uh, we are very welcome anybody who are interested in this project to join the project. Um, by 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 filing the issue by giving VC a uh, virtual class a try, so uh, and I'm happy to help people to use it and uh, making this project better. So next, um, I'm going to hand over to my Jim for the next presentation. Thank you, Fei. Yeah, so hi everyone. I'm Jim Baguardia, and I lead the multi-tenancy benchmarking effort within this group. And so both Adrian and Faye showed us, you know, different ways of implementing multi-tenancy. And as everyone probably knows, there's several, several constructs in Kubernetes that you can use for security, for multi-tenancy, for segmentation, isolation. But one of the common challenges that we heard from folks in the community, uh, from customers is, how do I know that my cluster is properly configured for multi-tenancy? Are there ways to measure this, test this, and report this, right? So the benchmarking effort, our, our focus is to create a set of guidelines for first off, of course, configuring multi-tenancy, and then to also create tools to easily be able to validate and test uh, whether multi-tenancy is properly implemented. Um, so in terms of what are some of the definitions we have come up with, and these are, of course, things that, that are evolving in the community, but right now we have two profile levels defined where the first profile level, the idea is that given any namespace, independently of how this namespace was configured, how do you make sure that that namespace has the right constructs, has all of the right, uh, again, the isolation, the segmentation required for you know, multi-tenancy of different teams using that same cluster. And then with the profile level two, the idea is to extend the first profile level and also add self-service for that. So not only do we allow in that profile level uh, teams to be able to, you know, uh, to isolate and segment their workloads, but also to be able to then do self-service operations, like maybe defining custom network policies for their application, custom roles, things like that, that would be required um, across the, you know, different multi-tenancy constructs. Also in terms of the categories of the benchmarks and tests, we identified seven different categories. So everything from isolating the control plane from workloads, isolating uh, you know, tenant workloads from each other, network isolation, storage isolation, uh, making sure host resources are not accessed from pods. So these are uh, following like pod security best practices, ensuring fairness through configuring resource quotas, and then finally self-service, which is profile level two, um, as, as I was discussing earlier. And then in terms, of, in terms of the test, what we saw is just checking configuration is not always enough uh, because there's an increasingly you know, number of different ways. Uh, just take, for example, network segmentation. There's a number of different ways you could configure network segmentation or implement it. Um, so instead of just checking for configuration, what we also do is run some behavioral tests in terms of how multi-tenancy is configured within the cluster. So today, uh, in, you know, the tests are mostly focused on namespace-based isolation, but as the virtual cluster project evolves, we'll also be looking at adding behavioral tests uh, to be able to check on that. So with that, you know, and the, you know, I also mentioned that part of the effort of this track was to also come up with a validation tool. So we have a kubectl plugin, which you can run on any cluster. Or it just requires a namespace and a role. And I'll give a quick demo of this. And what it will do is it will allow us to check and it will run about um, 15 or so different tests to, to ensure that multi-tenancy is properly configured. And this list of tests, again, all of this is on our repo. So uh, feel free to browse through, look at the details, provide feedback and comments there. 
But let me just show what this looks like in action. And then we'll come back and you know, talk a little bit about the roadmap, et cetera. So here I have already a cluster configured. And what I'm going to do just uh, in sake of time is I'm going to show what this looks like when running. So here I'm using a particular user role. This is a tenant admin alley. And the namespace here is test. So there's, um, it's going to go the, uh, the MTB plugin is going to run through a number of tests. And as you can see, uh, what happened initially was it's, you know, a few of the tests pass because I have, you know, quota configured, I have some limits configured, but a lot of the tests are failing at the moment, right? So what I can do, and all of this, by the way, is documented on our, you know, web, web page. So if you browse into the project and, um, if you look at you know the MTB web page, you will see instructions for going through this exact same demo. But I'm going to apply you know some policies now to for segmentation isolation within my cluster. I'm using Kiverno policies. There's also you know OPA gatekeeper policies, so you can choose uh, which policies you apply. And as you can see, what these are doing is they're providing host isolation. Uh, there's different policies for also you know disallowing things like adding capabilities to your pod, et cetera. So with that, let's run these tests again. And what you know, we would expect to happen is we, we would get much better results this time around uh, as we're running the tool. And since we have the policy engine in place, which is you know, uh, guaranteeing some isolation segmentation. So this time, and you know, as expected, we went through all of these 15 tests, we're seeing a pass. So this gives a very easy way for us to now validate that the namespace is properly configured. So a few other things that we're working on, and this is where, again, we're looking you know, for folks to join in and help and uh, extend some of this, or even just contribute by giving feedback, is we want to add more behavioral tests for storage and networking. Uh, there are you know, some pending requests for also converting this tool to run inside of the cluster and produce periodic reports using some, you know, a, a custom resource for reporting. And then also, you know, there's interest from other working groups uh, to be able to reuse these, the benchmarking tool uh, for auditing and benchmarking across different other types of security standards like the pod security levels, uh, things to that nature. So that's a quick, you know, overview of the multi-tenancy benchmarking project. And uh, I think upfront Tasha gave some links. I'm just uh, showing the repo links and other things um, again, but we're here and we're open to take your questions in chat. Um, so feel free to jump in and ask questions there. <laughs> 